Okay, so let's go ahead and see Team Server in action here. I'll go ahead and log in. You'll see that we have some very uh, intuitive and inclusive searching capabilities within this tool. That's going to help us find or discover different terms or objects that we're trying to track down within Team Server. You'll see what I mean by inclusive uh, when I go ahead and I search for a term uh, CLV. I get this term customer lifetime value returned. The reason this was returned here is because if you notice in the search in options, we're searching name, alias and synonym, abbreviations, which actually CLV is the abbreviation for customer lifetime value, the definition, we could search notes, and custom attributes. You can actually create your own attributes for terms that don't come out of the box. So we're very quickly able to discover a term and it, you know oftentimes you know this is a good example because as a business person uh, I might not know the term by its actual name I might know it much better by its abbreviation. Let's go ahead and drill down into this as we'll see its description page which of course this is where we get to understand or know the term much better. Perhaps I'm a data analyst or I'm a marketing professional. One of the things I need to do is start to begin to create a segmentation strategy. And part of that strategy might be based off of customer lifetime value. As a marketer, if I come into this uh, term page, I can see its definition, a lot of other metadata, you know, the, the department that it's used in. Uh, this is actually a custom attribute that I added so that I wanted to make note that this is used in the marketing and BI departments so I created an attribute for that uh, and I also added the formula so that the user knows how to calculate customer lifetime value. The next thing as the marketer I'll need to know is actually where's the data to plug in the variables for this formula. One of the nice features of ER Studio Team Server is that you can store your business terminology within the same platform that you're storing the model metadata that your your data modelers and data architects are developing uh, within the ER Studio data architect and repository tools. That allows me to relate my terms to those models and to the objects within those models. So if we go to the related ER objects tab here, we can see that I've related customer lifetime value to a CLV submodel into four columns. Let's go ahead and quickly drill into CLV and one of the reasons this relationship might be beneficial is because when I'm writing a query against those four columns, a visual image of how the tables that those columns are in are related to each other could be quite beneficial. So you can see here the view image. I can see the dimensions that those columns are found in and now I know the relationships between those tables so I can easily write that query we provide a data source registry. What that allows us to do is catalog all of the various data sources around the organization. That then allows us to map the data sources to the models in Team Server. I've gone ahead and I've mapped the CLV model, submodel, and actually its uh, parent model, the main model, the AOE data warehouse, to a data source. It actually, let's expand the data source here and we can see that I've I've mapped it to the Acme data warehouse data source here. What's nice about this is now I know where the those tables lie that I saw in that image there. So I can drill into Acme data warehouse and I can see the definition of it, where it's located. You know, I see it's a SQL server, the host name, port information, etc. So now not only do I know how those tables and columns are structured, but I know where they are. I know what data source I need to connect to to retrieve data for this customer lifetime value query that I need to run to pull the data for the for the formula. Okay, so we've just gone ahead and used the search across terms. Let's go ahead and shift gears a little bit more and let's say we instead of searching for a term we wanted to find a specific column within uh, our environment. Notice here, I'm going to go ahead and do a search for a specific credit card number column. Without a search capability, it would be quite tedious to go ahead and track down a specific column you're trying to search for uh, or discover. Uh, and especially in this example here, let's go ahead and search for credit card. 
and actually notice here that as I type it's updating my results and I won't have to even finish the keywords here once we got ahead and typed as much as credit card num we've boiled it down to a single column so notice here that the column that we've found is not even named credit card num or credit card number this is another example of how the inclusive search is very beneficial to the user because not only are we searching the name but in this case what's important is we're searching the definition in credit card numbers in the definition of this card number the abbreviated card num column so now of course once we've gone ahead and discovered oh, okay this is our credit card number column we can drill into it and uh, of course see its general properties you know the same type of information that we saw for that data first purchase column such as the data source so we know where to find uh, that data and quite a bit of other information of course uh, one other attribute that I'd like to point out here is its security property. This is a bit of metadata that's been applied to this column within the data model. So a modeler in ER Studio Data Architect applied this to the credit card number column or this card number column and once that was pulled into Team Server, once it landed here, I've gone ahead and, and created an alert based off of this because this is important information here. This is this is regulated customer info that as you can see this privacy level security property is pointing out and I want to bring that to the surface as you can see this is actually a warning that's what this icon means uh, a warning alert and message here that this is regulated customer information not to be replicated without proper approval so these alerts are a very beneficial feature within team server that allow you to of course know in this case the column a bit better and also protect the column a bit so that users who come across this column know this information that this is regulated customer info. The next feature I want to discuss is a feature called tooltips within Team Server. This allows you to push metadata from Team Server out to other interfaces. That allows you to push the term metadata out to users, specifically users who are uh, maybe using a web page to access an internal wiki page or an internal intranet and within that let's say wiki quite a bit of your terminology is defined on a specific page as that user begins to read that page you know they might not understand a term and they might need its definition with the tooltip feature we can push that definition to the user so that they can access the definition on the page so the example that I'll use here is on Wikipedia I'm just pushing definitions to Wikipedia you can see the many words are actually terms that have a dotted underline here so accounting for instance when I hover over accounting I get the definition of accounting or financial accounting standards board is another term I've defined in team server and I get its definition and if I wanted to know more information about it I can go ahead and click on view in team server and I'll land on its description page and I can find out you know all of the other information about this term here Glossary tooltips is another feature that, that help users understand or know the term or the data that they're dealing with. So the final thing we want to discuss here is the collaboration functionality within this tool. So let's go to my home page here where I have an activity stream and this is just one way to take a look at the collaboration feature which is basically the ability to begin and contribute to discussions within Team Server. Uh, in, in my example here, I've gone ahead and I've begun a discussion a, around customer. And I'm just pointing out here that our definition of the customer term is appropriate for marketing, but there's probably a better one we could use for sales. This discussion is then shown on my activity stream because both Scott and Stan have replied to it. Scott's gone ahead and created a term for sales with, with the definition shown here. And Stan has also noted that Scott's sales definition of customer is what marketing defines as a prospect and gone ahead and added that term to the marketing glossary. So one thing I guess I haven't really shown you again is the is the, all of the glossaries that I have. I have a sales glossary, I have a marketing glossary amongst others and you can put a term in its proper glossary of course. Now the last thing that I'm noting here is that I've I've actually related those terms together. So in Team Server you can relate terminology 
to each other and that allows you in this case to know where customer is used across departments. So if I go to the related terms tab, we can see here's the term for customer defined in sales and here's how prospect is defined in marketing. So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks for your time and have a great day.